life-changing innovation for those needing help with personal mobility. Welcome back to Textination. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us is National Hall of Fame inventor Garrett Brown. Hi, Garrett. Hi, Fred. How are you? Hi, all. A pleasure to speak with you. And we're going to be talking about Zine, Z-E-E-N, and what it brings to personal mobility. But let's give the audience a bit more about your amazing background uh, first here. You, you changed cinematography, even winning an Academy Award. Tell us about it. Uh, well, I was a, I've always been a Philadelphian, and I was a filmmaker in Philly in the 70s. And I learned my trade in the free library by reading all the film books. So, of course, I was an out-of-date filmmaker as were the books, and thought I needed an old-fashioned studio and a big dolly and, you know, Mike Boom that cranks out and all that. And I found a bankrupt producer and bought all that and then realized that that dolly with my little 12-pound camera, 800 pounds versus 12, you can just picture us little crews trying to lift that thing into pickup trucks and take it on location because I like smooth shots. So... Very long story short, that incentivized me to try and try and disconnect the camera from the camera person. And a couple of years later, I scored that, you know, improbably. I still think it's, it's all highly improbable, but there it is. And of course, if you can run around and climb stairs with something you're holding, that's so superior to dollies and tracks and, you know, and all of that, that it just took Hollywood by storm. So the, the study oh, camp, <laughs> the study camp. Thanks for naming it. Yeah. Um, I hated that name study camp. I wanted to call it the Brown stabilizer, but wiser heads prevailed and they called it the study camp. And of course that's a perfectly good word. And it's done astonishingly well. It's still expanding. It's still all over the world. It's still, probably the best way for an ambulatory person to shoot smooth stuff. And you've never stopped tinkering, inventing, keeping busy with, with ideas. <laughs> yeah, it's habitual. You, you get in a frame of mind where you look, if, if something is missing, and of course that's the great inventive act is identifying what's not here. You know, we take what's, what's here for granted and we don't think about what's missing in between those things so that has led to a few objects and sometimes they're startling you know one was the sky cam and um the sky cam was invented when computers were really primitive in 1984 and just yesterday i got a video from the present sky cam licensee just a wonderful tech, you know, review of everything techy and football broadcasting. And the Skycam, of course, was, you know, a headliner in that film. So that's amazing. That was how long ago? 84? My God, 38 years ago. This is a slow profession. You know, I I analyze inventing, I'm talking about. I analyzed my work last night in loosely lying around and just thought. I sort of did something every decade, you know, in the 70s, the study cam, in the 80s, the sky cam, in the 90s, these Olympic cameras, uh, of a point-to-point -point flying camera, and the, et cetera. It goes on and on. And lately, as I'm sure you're about to say, I've turned my hand to something else, you know, something wildly missing. Well, tell us, this is called Zine. Describe for yeah. us what it is. And the story behind it is, is really fascinating. Well, the thing that's missing, let's cut to the chase, is between walkers and wheelchairs. And I was hanging out with my dad in his last days as he was declining and for weeks watching his pals on walkers and wheelchairs and didn't admire either of those things. Um, the walker is in your way, slow, not cool, and you can fall. Uh, the wheelchair is, in one sense, a one-way ticket to not walking, you know, because being upright, <clears throat> going through those motions is hugely beneficial physically and mentally. You know? your, your circulatory system, your, your limbic system, digestion, bone density, all of it 
his response to doing what we were designed to do, which is be upright and walk around. And so when people stop doing that, that's not good. But that was, a, it was been, a, I'd have to say, a stupidly long time it took us to get this. And COVID exacerbated that by slowing everything down. But we actually have scored something that you know, people are responding to fantastically. Uh, every day we see another astonishing story from people who are, you know, have various disabilities that inhibit mobility. And the leading crowd, the leading audience for the zine, and I'll explain what it's about in a moment, are people who are disabled, they, MS, um, uh, Parkinson's, cerebral palsy, stroke rehab, wounded warriors, and a host of alphabetically named uh, muscularly deteriorating conditions. And when you get to a point where you can't safely walk or safely even stand up, then you need help. And, and that help seems to, we've seemed to have really found a, a, you know, a sweet spot for a device that is a chair that lifts you up, does all the lifting and gets you up to your standing height. That incidentally is a great old bar stool when you're up at standing height because that chair is now up at that height and you can recline at you know, a sociable altitude with people and converse rather than being in a wheelchair and looking up at them. And then importantly, it's a great way to get around. You can walk safely with it because you have a very easy to manage seat belt and a saddle, or you can lean back on the saddle and coast. And people love that, you know, they, they can cover the ground at an airport or a mall extremely more rapidly than otherwise. This is a better way of life for me. Why? It just makes living much easier. There's, everything's less cumbersome to move, to raise yourself, to do all the different things that you should do naturally, that are struggle for people with like, diseases. I had a good experience with the zine. When I went to Longwood Gardens, I used this for every phase. Like I was pushed in a, like a wheelchair, okay? I glided, I went up inclines, declines. I was walking on the grass with the, with the zine, it was great. Things I haven't done in years that I did with this. When you want to talk before, I always had to look up to talk to people when they were standing around, you know, ha we're having a get together. With the zine, you can raise yourself up, which is nice. So you can go to a normal height and talk to people like, like you're sitting there at a bar stool, you know? Of course, at a beer though. <laughs> And you may ask, why Zen, C-E-E-N? Well, among other things, we wanted a word that didn't mean anything bad in any language we could think of. My uncle worked for DuPont and had a horrible experience with a name that meant something else in French. Uh, in fact, for the interested, technically interested parties, he, he worked on CORFAM, K-C-O-R-F-A-M which is the fake breathable leather that DuPont had high hopes for, except the core fan means body of woman in France and you know lots of other strange things here. There. And their computer didn't pick that up. It was a computer pick name. So Zine is a homage to Drazine, D-R-A-I-S-I-N-E. Drazine is that old original first bicycle without pedals invented by Baron von Drays, hence Drazine, in 19, uh, 1816. And the young bucks could just scoot around on the, on the Drazine, which was called the hobby horse in England. And it swept all over Europe and into the U.S. to an extent, because for the first time, people could scoot along and steer. And that is, you know, an early experience with self-steered coasting. And coasting is delightful. You know? So Zine, Z-E-M, is a tribute to Drazine. And yes, you can coast on it, but way more safely than a Drazine, I guess. So. 
So describe for us, you got to work. You saw, you saw your father, you saw his, his, his friends and the, yeah, the we, issues that they were having. And you got to work with, with, with I guess your welding machinery. <laughs> Tell me what happened. Well, I, once you decide to do something about something that's missing, then you have an infinity of choices. You can take your you know, nascent idea and try to flog it and sell it early on. In the case of the study cam, the results were so studied, stunning that I could immediately get a licensee. And incidentally, you could show the results of the study cam in a stable, impossible shot that couldn't have been made any other way without giving away how it's done. We don't have that advantage with the zine exactly, but it, it, it demos extraordinarily well. And my first move was to uh, round up some really gifted souls and start experimenting. Because if you're trying to do something in a place where nothing has been done, you have no rules, no, no help, no somebody else's course that you can improve on. There was just nothing in this space. And we, did, over time, decided that it, it, first of all, needed to assist with lifting, which is something I have a lot of experience with, lifting 70-pound cameras and lifting them in a pretty elegant way. You know, the study cam operator moves that camera around with fingertips because it's on a spring-loaded arm and a gimbal and attached to a vest. And so in space, that kind of lifting is delightful, you know, meaning from seated to standing it lifts about the same and the zine can be set to lift five increments between 100 pounds roughly and 200 and that means almost everybody that is eligible which are people from 80 or 90 pounds to 250 get a vast amount of help going up and down so that's one thing the other thing is the seat belt provides what you sit on uh, the saddle and seatbelt combo safely keeps you aboard and keeps your center in the middle of the zine. And therefore you could recline on the saddle and you could coast. So right away we were into caster technology and there's a spectacular caster invention in the zine that allows it to track when it goes forward and then behave conventionally as four wheel casters. If you're backing up or going sideways in a kitchen or and so on. And the desire for it got really ambitious for me. We, you know, we wanted it to be a chair that gets up and goes, a comfy seat, a comfy bar stool, a great safe way to get around, and a lifestyle machine in the sense that the handlebars flip back and then there's nothing in front of you. You can cook and you know clean and push a grocery cart and you know sit down and put your pants on for god's sake or tie your shoe uh, and and that sort of thing is really appealing to people that have, are used to having a walker out in front of them or you know being trapped at wheelchair height we've had people at shows you know say things that i just never expected to hear before one guy who doesn't even have any use of his legs <clears throat> and therefore couldn't you know, coast around with it, just wanted to be able to raise himself up and and cook. Because as he told me, he got so tired of having grease spattering in his face when he's cooking at wheelchair height. You know, I never would have thought of that in a in a hundred years, you know. Um so this this is so not seeing, this is not a motorized uh unit, is no, it? this is self-propelled, which is you know, we we deliberately picked that slot, if you motorize it, then your feet aren't on the ground and you're not getting that walking. But an astonishing number of people that can no longer walk or even stand can get on the zine and move themselves around if their weight is supported on the saddle. And that has been a revelation. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's, it, it reaches pretty high. Uh, we made one of these Early on, we designed the thing to be an institutional device, and it was big, and it didn't fold. We expected that uh, rehab hospitals would buy them, and maybe you know, old folks' places, uh, geriatric institutions would have them. 
And about halfway through this, we got a, an inkling that people would want to bring it home. They would want to own this. They'd want to take it out, get it in a car, take it to the mall, you know, take it to Longwood. And fortunately, I, I made the call to stop the program, start over again, make it lightweight and folding. And that's what we did. The zine, you know, weighs around 40 pounds. It folds to 11 inches wide. Um, it, we made a rig to help it get in a car. Again, non-motorized. Everything's non-motorized. No batteries. It's silent, you know. I mean, I almost laughed when I saw lifting chairs that, you know, lift you up like... <laughs> and then they become a sliding board. You know, it didn't seem all that useful or sensible to me. This lifting is the way you stood up when you were a kid, you know. It's as if your own muscles were 30 years ago, you know. Because there's no speed limit, there's no noise, you know. It just makes it, it's just easy to pop up. So we're excited. We're hugely excited. We, we only had the funds to make a hundred of these and we've sold the hundred. We have another few frames coming in next week. <clears throat> so we're about to do a, a crowd equity funding round to get the, the dough to edge into mass production. We need to order big quantities to parts which will help the price get down and, and so on. You know, besides being uh, lightweight and, and portable, that's another goal of yours is to make this something that people can actually buy, make it affordable, maybe get insurance involved too, as they are with some kinds of devices. Right? Yeah, I think we will eventually. That's a process. You have to persuade the, you know, forces of insurance that, um, that having this available to somebody will actually save money in the long run. And I think we're getting a pretty strong indication that that's true. Um, one of our early customers is a woman named Kim who has a form of ataxia where she just can't balance and can't you know, stand up without hanging on to stuff. And she got one in April and there's an astonishing clip that we just just got of her now this number of months later because when she when she first got it she reported later that she was a you know very discouraged because she got tired after she moved it you know 200 feet when i first tried the scene i was terrible just terrible I tripped over my feet, I was so slow, I was so shaky, I was so unsure of myself. So I started working at it, started going to the park. Every day I got better, every day it got stronger. Every time I went out, it got further and further, I got more and more excited. My trip was coming up. I had a huge cross-country trip. I did entire museums with it. I did caves. I did the Grand Canyon. I did Vegas. And it was actually easier on my family because they didn't have to lug a scooter back and forth. They also didn't have to worry about my safety. I didn't have to worry about my safety. Because whenever I'm in the scene, I feel so much safer. I feel secure. I feel like I can almost do anything. There's a place called the Promenades, which is like an outdoor mall that my husband has just dropped me off at. And several times now recently, for hours, and I go and do my own thing. I get my hair done. I get my nails done. The feeling of independence. I have been dealing with my issue for over 16 years. And I was the most independent person you would ever imagine. So I lost a lot. And the zine is giving me that back to me. It's been a journey, a wonderful journey. So not only did she get a lot of her independence back, I got a lot of my independence back. I don't have to pay attention to her as much. 
Sometimes we'll come here, we'll have the grandkids. You look over there, I'll be over there with the kids later on the playground. And I could just let her go and I have no fear that she's gonna fall, she's, she's fine. It's nothing like I used to be. I, I had trouble walking 500 feet. Now I do a mile and a half easy without stopping. This pretty quickly, the strength where I had to like help guide her and hold on tight, she started getting so strong. I could feel that she was driving me. I've gotten so much more conditioned yeah, and I've lost weight too. <laughs> This stuff just is it's astonishing, you know, because we imagine that people would love it, but that's, you know, there was no evidence of that until it's in people's hands. And it has taken a place in people's lives that is, they regard as life-changing and say so. And that's good. You know, that's really good. The study can is sort of a fluffy little invention. It's not going to revolutionize anybody's life. You know, but this thing may be, this may be better, more important. You know? Well, there might be camera operators who would argue with you about that. But about the well, that's true. But they, they may need a scene someday too. So. <laughs> Is there a I'll target price? Is there a target yes, price they, that you would like to reach with this, uh, Aaron? Well, the MSRP is thirty eight hundred, and which is said to be reasonable for things like this. Uh, that's the price we need to be able to get distributors and you know get it in distribution. But if we can if we can build higher quantities, then of course as things go, these prices will come down dramatically. But at the moment, it's you know it's for people that can afford it or can raise the money. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of ways to do t uh, time payments. There are ways of you know getting crowdfunding grants and things like that. Um, but at the moment, that that is the price is thirty eight hundred, and there are various discounts available for you know private individuals. And the website is gozen z e e n dot com. What about the future? Yeah, G, what, may I spell it g o z e e n dot com? Right. Gozen, you might enjoy that. There's some good stuff on the website. So some great videos, and we're going to we're going to be people who are watching this uh, interview are also seeing some of the video there. But tell us what the future holds with this. Are you still tinkering with this? Or are there things that you want to do, or different iterations that you're thinking of? No, the the product itself got to a very <clears throat> high level of sophistication. It's very civilized, and partly was a, 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 the only benefit of COVID for us was that everything was shut down cold and yet we still had an engineering staff. And so we got a chance to do something I've never done before, <clears throat> which was hang on to one of these little babies until it could walk and, you know, speak and, and go to college almost, you know. Uh, all these little inventions have been dragged out of the nest, you know, squawking when they were babies. Because that's the nature of commerce, you know. People want whatever it is right away. In this case, we we refined it to quite an extent, so I'm very happy with its this product. And next on our agenda are you know a few little tweaks, uh, a a pediatric version, which is really needed, um, and various other uses of this lifting technology, which is pretty pretty interesting. What is it that you're using to provide that lift? Can you can you tell us, or is that in the secret sauce? No, no, it's uh, it's you know regarded as a very clever use of uh, hydraulic, you know, gas springs, so-called hydraulic pistons, little ones like this, two of them. But the way we use them is uh, derived from the way I lift things smoothly with Steadicam and shares some of those geometries and uh, just works a treat and is, you know, is silent and, you know, durable, and unobtrusive, you know, uh, and has no batteries, which is good. And is there any kind of, your feet are the braking mechanism? It's not that there's no braking uh, involved? Uh, oh, no, there are, there are brakes. If you have the handlebars out, there are brakes and parking brakes. 
if you're going down a ramp, it's good to be able to not just slide your feet and stop, but to, it's, you no, know, it's important to have brakes. <clears throat> also, if you're you know popping up and down and are you know on a, any sort of terrain that might that, that the zine might move, it's great to just put the parking brake on. You know, um, I mean, you if you pick if you picture some of the scenarios. Fred, and this is one that I watched with my dance friends. I watched a guy come into the dining room on a walker, somewhat painstakingly. Then he had to set the walker aside to get himself down in a chair. And this is after going through the line and having his tray and so on. And then when it was time for dessert, he had to retrieve the walker, get up from a chair very laboriously, walk her over to the buffet to get dessert, come back and rinse and repeat, you know. <clears throat> and I knew enough about what might this might be to realize that if you're sitting on the zine, you don't need to change devices. You just cruise up to the table, lower down, and then you back out, rise up, go to the buffet, come back, you know. In other words, the, you're, you don't have to change machinery to do these different things. And that's good. You know, very good. Marvelous. So once again, the website is gozeen, G-O-Z-E-E-N.com. Congratulations once again, uh, Garrett, on, on everything you've done. And, and this in particular, I think it's going to change a lot of lives. Thank you, Fred, and thanks for for uh, for having me on your show. It's great.